So today I'm taking a look at the OpInterface USB KVM. That's USB-C to your laptop, keyboard video mouse to your target or victim computer. Now this one's different from other units I've reviewed on the channel before in that it's extremely small and portable. And it does this by relying on a desktop app on your computer to do most of the heavy lifting. So let's take a look and see if this thing might be something worthy of your tool bag. Come along on this adventure. So let's see what we got in the box. Guess it goes this way. So this is the carrying case it came with. This looks like the interface itself, the open interface. Quick start guide. This appears to be a C to C cable. Oops, we got C to C and HDMI to HDMI. This is multi-cable, so this is C to C, but then it can also do C to A cable tie. This looks like it's for VGA. So we got VGA on one side, VGA and USB and audio. So I bet they need the USB for power in this case, and then the audio and video are turning into HDMI. So that's for the device itself. So we have the open interface, mini KVM. So on the top we have host, and we can choose host or target. I'm not sure what the switch does yet. On the bottom side we have target USB, HDMI, and USB 2 switchable. So I'm assuming this is what passes through the device so I could plug something like my Ventoy drive in here maybe. Uh, these pieces are 3D printed, but I have a prototype so this may not be final. So for my victim, this is my Kali Linux box. I need to do some updates on it, so let's plug it in and see what it looks like. So I'm going to need HDMI for this one. I could use VGA, but I hate VGA. So we're going to go to the HDMI. And then we use this very handy cable that's got a type C and a type A because we're going to need type A. And plug that in here. Now this nice flexible cable is my host cable, so this can go off to my laptop. It's coming over here in the software, I'm using the macOS version of the app, so it's telling me to connect it, so I'll go ahead and plug it in. And there we go, that was pretty quick. I mean the computer's not on now, so I should probably turn it on. Now I'm going to let it boot up, and let's see if we can watch the BIOS and get into Cali. So I can just uh, use my Mac mouse here. It's working pretty well. Let's see if I remember my password. Oh, I did. Okay. Apt update. Pseudo apt update. Really couldn't ask for too much more. I got my keyboard. I got my mouse. I got video. It's working. It was nice and easy. Oh, it looks like we lost a few letters there. Well, we'll let that go. Another fun fact is while I've got the Open Interface KVM app running, I can come over here to OBS and it shows up as a regular capture device. So it currently looks like it's running at 720p. I'm capturing at 16 by 10 because that's my monitor resolution, so I got the black bars. But I could just capture directly in OBS and also use the Open Interface software at the same time. At least on Mac OS. So next thing I want to try is copying and pasting into here. For some of the other KVMs I've tested, this is relatively easy. So I'll see how well it works. Okay, well, literally typed V. Um, can I paste? That is sending a paste. does not look like it's happening. Last thing I want to try is pass through some flash drives. I have some flash drives here, including the WEG slash BAM motor drive, which has Proxmox on it, and also the Rubik's Cube, which has Debian. So I'm going to plug Debian into this switchable USB 2 port here. And switchable means I can switch it between the host and the victim. Oh, it doesn't quite fit. Okay, I guess we'll be using the Proxmox drive then. So I plug that in. 
and now it should show up on either the host or the guest. So if you want to boot ISOs or things like that, you'll still have to carry around your Ventoy drive or your keychain full of flash drives to boot from, because this does not have built-in storage, and it also doesn't appear to be passing through ISOs from my laptop. So final thoughts, what do I think of the Open Interface KVM? So it's a nice little thing, fits well in my hand, it's pretty tiny, easy to connect, comes with a nice and flexible Type-C cable to connect to my laptop. The VGA adapter is nice. I wish VGA was not so prevalent, but I understand that some people still need it. Upsides of this guy, it's quite cheap. I'll put the price on the screen down below, as of the making of this video, of course. The software works well. I haven't had any problems with it. They sent me a beta version of macOS, that's what I've been using. They also have it available for Windows and Linux. The pass-through USB port is pretty handy. I do wish that it had either some amount of internal storage or the ability to pass through ISOs that are on my computer. So when I reviewed the PiCast KVM in the past, I guess link up here to that one, it, uh, it had internal storage that you could put ISOs on and it could mount those. So that was an advantage the PiCast had compared to this. PiCast is also more expensive though, so it depends on what features you need. The ability for me to do capture because it acts like a webcam is very handy for me specifically because I screen capture a lot, but it probably wouldn't matter that much for you. So take away that what you will. The one feature that I do think the software is missing is text pasting. They might be adding it. I'm not sure. I guess I'll put some GitHub issues on the screen if they're working on it, but that's currently lacking in the version that I have. So I'll let you know if that changes. If you want to buy one of these, I have a link down below to where you can get one. If you like my content, feel free to tip me on Ko-fi. I always appreciate it. I have a Discord server down below. If you're interested in that as well, you can chat with me there. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.